what is up guys welcome to the channel uh, today we're gonna be doing a little repair on my 2015 Ford Fusion it's got the 2 liter EcoBoost engine uh, we had a check engine light and we scanned it and based on those faults we have found the tank ventilation valve or the tank canister purge valve it's commonly called to referred to by a couple names has indeed failed um, it's a very common failure on these vehicles, so that's another reason I'm recording it. It's a simple fix that you don't need many tools to do, and the average person should be able to accomplish this and uh, save themselves some money from having, you know, paying a professional to do it. So, without further ado, we will proceed. I'm going to start with, before we replace the part, go over the symptoms of what this part, or what happens when this part fails. Uh, you're going to note one of the many things that you're going to notice may happen is after you fuel the vehicle up, it'll be hard to start. It'll crank several seconds before actually firing up and it may stumble when it does finally fire up. Uh, that's because all the vapors that were created by the fuel going into the tank have basically flooded out the intake manifold of the, uh, of the vehicle, causing it to run and struggle to start because there's more fuel vapor than what the computer is used to seeing. Uh, another common symptom, other than this is all other than the check engine light, um, another common symptom is you'll notice sometimes that maybe at idle the vehicle will stumble a little bit. And then the third and also somewhat common um, item you'll notice is actually the fuel inlet where you put the gas uh, filler handle in. You'll notice that sometimes it'll have like a very strong like sound coming from it. It'll almost sound like it's like almost like a vacuum cleaner and it'll go on and off, on and off. Um, so yeah, those are the three common symptoms you'll find in addition to the check engine light. So now we will proceed with replacing the tank purge valve. First thing you're gonna do is uh, pop the hood and remove the engine cover. This is going to give you better access to what we're going to be working with today. The tank purge valve is actually right here, but when you order it, it comes with all of this and then two more connections down by the throttle. They're somewhat tricky to get to, but I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so the first step in this process, we're gonna disconnect the tank ventilation valve, which is actually under this intake pipe. Uh, it's right here. It has one ventilation line connector and an electric connector. Um, the electric connector, I will show when we pull it out, what it looks like and how to release it. It's just a simple push tab. I'm gonna edit all that out. Sure. All right. And then the ventilation connector, depending on what style you have, most of them you just um, they have two tabs that you kind of like push back to the rear, and the whole tab will pop up. A 90 degree pick will help. Kind of keep pressure on the tab. All right, got it. And we just lift it off. So, got our connector right here. Get my flashlight. Here's the connector. You just push back on the back side of it right there on this tab right here. And it will release. And then the ventilation line. Mine has a green tab on it. It'll lock into place only when uh, the tank vent valve is positioned in there. But it has two ears on the back of this green tab that you kind of push back and then pull up on the green tab and it'll release. So this is on the uh, the feed side. Now we're going to go to the uh, basically the output side of the vent valve. It goes to three locations. One right here on the intake. 
and then there will be two connections down by the throttle body. One will be above it and one will be below it. Uh, the easiest one to get to is the one up here. You just got two push connectors. You just kind of pinch them together and pull it off. And that's it. The other two, here, I'm going to step over here. The other two are a lot trickier to get to. Uh, you're going to want to do this with the engine as cold as possible um, as you're going to be reaching down near the hot, some of the hot parts of the engine. Uh, so you don't need to take that off. But you'll see one right here. It has a green ear. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Right here. And there's gonna be one right here, way down there. It's gonna be very tough to see on camera. Um, let's see, right there, the one with the yellow. So you're gonna see me release those. Um, and I'll kinda show you my somewhat tricks to do it. Because this is actually the second time this thing has failed. I've got 162,000 miles on this car. But the green one, or they both operate just like the one that was on the tank ventilation valve. You kind of just mess with the, uh, the ears and that'll allow you to pull the tab. So just push them to the rear and then kind of pull the tab down if you can. And again, using a pick can help. That one's off. And then this one, you're definitely gonna need some sort of pick because it is buried under there. You're not gonna be able to see it on the camera. But. Just kinda use two fingers. Gonna disconnect the uh, boost pressure sensor or the manifold pressure sensor just to give you a little bit more room. Get your hand down there. got the ears started so now we're just using a, a 90 degree pick to kind of push down on it to fully release the uh, the yellow uh, retaining clip
Go ahead and pause it. Pressed. You kind of use it and just push it down. And then pull it off. It comes out. Let's see. All right. So this is what we're working with. I'll kind of just go over what I what I did. So these yellow ears. Oh, the camera's focused on it. Mm -hmm are in the upright position, pull the ears back, and then you'll stick a pick in this pocket right here and push it down. There's really no way to get your fingers under there to pull it down. Or you can try and pull the ears back and push down with your fingers. But I've found that using a 90 degree pick works best. And you pretty much do the same thing with the green one as well. It's the same setup. So that's the lock position, pull the tabs, and then push it down. I just don't have the leverage to do it right now because it's not mounted. So this is our old tank purge valve system. I don't know why you can't just get the valve separately, but so we can go ahead and install the other one. So the new one and the old one, this bracket is what mounts to the engine. I don't know why it also comes with the new bracket. I just reuse the old bracket. There's nothing wrong with it. I just take that off and put it to the side. And now we can install the new one. Uh, it's kind of just the reverse process. I do the bottom one first. All the, none of the sizes are the same, so you can't really mess it up. Once you get it on the actual tube that it feeds onto, just gonna reach your hand in and push it, push it towards the, uh, the throttle body. Should click into place. All right, pause it. Uh, once you get that bottom one clipped in, and you can go for the smaller upper one that was under the throttle body. You'll see it connects right here. So just push that on. Again, snap into place. Don't forget to reconnect your uh, manifold pressure sensor. And then you have your fresh inlet one right there. And then if you swing around, and go ahead and do the uh, hook up the actual purge valve itself. So you just find the bracket that it uh, it mounts on, push the rubber mount onto it, and there'll be a the tank ventilation line connector. Feed it on by grabbing the neck of the hose, and then you, once it fully seats. Then you can push the uh, release tab. It won't seat unless that thing is all the way forward. Like that. And then hook up your connector. Everything should be snapping into place. You should audibly hear it. And you're pretty much done with the repair. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is hook up to the vehicle and uh, clear the check engine light. Alright, so we got our code reader here. Find the uh, OBD2 port. It's under the dash, right above the uh, hood release. Get in the car. Power it on. And then, uh, this isn't gonna read, is it? All right, here we go. Diagnose, OBD. It's gonna read the vehicle, identify it. All right, hit okay. Read codes. Okay, Ford, 
All right, so here's one of the codes that you can get with this fault, P144A, but we're really not interested. And then we'll go to erase codes. I know it's really hard to pick up this LCD screen on this camera, but basically you're just clearing the fault. It'll say cleared. We'll go ahead and start the car up. Uh, you're gonna wanna start it up three times. Reason being is after three times, any sort of circuit fault, check engine light will come back on. So we don't have a check engine light on, so we're good there. You can go ahead and remove your code reader. Just kind of give everything a little, little soft tug. Make sure it stays connected, and uh, that's it. So now we'll just uh, reinstall the engine cover, pop it into place, and we're done. So this completes the removal and replacement of the canister purge valve or tank ventilation purge valve or tank purge valve on the two liter EcoBoost in this Ford Fusion. This is going to apply for all your two liter EcoBoost Ford Fusions ranging from 2013 until 2020 and a production uh, procedure will be slightly different for some of those models um, but this is the more or less the base baseline uh, premise on how to do it. So I hope you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.